Hi everyone, hope you're all well. Today I have decided to do a bit of carving around the top of the glass. Uh, I have mentioned it before, but we haven't got on and done it as yet. Uh, not quite what I have in mind anyway. Here you will see I have got a glass that I have used on many occasions for my students. Uh, and of course the first thing I show them, especially if they've never engraved before, is a very simple flower. And uh, so I have scribbled on near the rim a simple flower with a couple of leaves that go back up to the rim. So what I'm going to simply show you is the engraving of this flower, but the carving out around the top. Now, this is something that if you're really ambitious, you can go all the way around the glass. And I might try and dig out an old picture of one that I've done uh, years ago. It's not something I have done that often. It's very time consuming and it's, well, I mean, it just becomes a decorative piece that you can't drink out of it at the end of the day. But uh, I think with this piece, uh, might as well just carry on playing with it. And one day I will stop when there's no room left on it. <laughs> Why not? It's quite a fun piece. And it's lovely lead crystal. Nice sound. Yeah. It's only just stopped ringing now. Amazing. And uh, yeah, let's get on with it. And by the way, I forgot to show you that, but that's one of the options to uh, write on the glass with. Hold on, let's get that into focus. There we go. Okay. Right here. Let's go. Right, so in the drill I have got a white Arkansas stone just with the little round head. Uh, any simple stone will do. It's just to do a very basic outline of my sketch and something that is not too deep and not too bright, just to mark it off, that's all. This waxy pencil is quite tough to get off, so I've got a wet cloth and uh, you can see I've just picked up some glass dust from the side of the tray and that acts as a slight abrasive and that helps it come off quite easily. Give it a bit of a dry and now you see the basic outline. This is my L20. It is not on my sheet of burrs that I sell but you can certainly ask for it. It is a diamond coated burr from top to bottom, virtually the 2.35 millimeter shank size. Got my dust extractor on for those who haven't seen me demonstrate my little trick. <laughs> it's very strong and I know that I'm during the course of this I will be uh, creating a bit of dust but I am using a lot of water um, and so initially you may not see too much dust. Using a slight carving action, I am just going into the middle of the space and you can see it is cutting very quickly and very easily. Pretty much like butter actually. Um, two reasons, the, the diamond burr is uh, nice and new and the other reason is the fact that this is lovely soft lead crystal. And I am very, very easily carving away the shape. Now ideally I want to be at a right angle to the glass but as you can see I'm struggling a little bit because I'm trying to keep my head out of the camera view and trying to get the angle right at the same time and it's a little bit tricky and so <laughs> but ideally uh, just trying to keep the uh, level um, straight at the top and just following the lines i have sped this up this little section of video in fact a lot of the video as as usual i have um increased the speed of this um i'll tell you now hold on i think it's 120 percent of normal speed at the moment 
Now you can imagine the fun you can have going all the way around the rim of the glass. If you were, uh, if you had the energy to do that and the time to do that. When I said it's very time consuming, in actual fact, as you can see, it's not that time consuming really. You can quite easily do it. Now, the this glass is relatively thick. I wouldn't recommend doing this with a very fine glass. Relatively thick. And in actual fact, if you've only got a cheap glass, I, I think that that would still be all right as long as it is substantial. Here I have got a rat's tail. Once again, same principle, diamond coating all the way down. And it's a newer rat's tail because obviously uh, if you've been grinding down the top to get to the new diamond, it's only going to be really short. So the longer the, the better, just so that you can uh, complete that sort of sawing action. Um, just to get down into the sharper bits. Now, if you don't have the L20, of course, you certainly can just use uh, this um, rat's tail or something similar. Even if it's a, a shorter burr, there are the shorter burrs out there um, readily available that are like the L20, but um, nowhere near as long as that. You can certainly use those. But to get down into the little corners, certainly uh, a rat's tail. And you can, if you felt like it, carve all the way into the glass and uh, as long as you are leaving enough to hold it all together, you could make a great big lacy pattern. That'll be fun. <laughs> I have done something similar to that before, uh, many years ago. Uh, goodness gracious, probably about 30 years ago. Now, I think I'm coming back with a little white, yeah, I have white Arkansas, a soft stone of some sort anyway, because you just want to take the roughness off that surface of the glass. Just smoothing it out a little. And I've, I've grabbed this shape because um, it is obviously a better shape to work with. A lot of you will have that elongated one anyway this is a slightly different burr but I do have the long the longer shape of the white Arkansas and uh, if you need to you can just bring the very very point you know carve it into a little point to get into the shop but, but I'm not being that fussy with this because quite frankly um, it's not chippy to be honest because of the quality of the crystal and because of the nice fresh fresh diamond I was not pressing hard by the way um, I was just engraving just at the same pressure that you would any normal in engraving that we've done uh, turning it round again I'm trying not to get my head in the way it's a little bit awkward to try and show you and and get to the areas uh, again, just to, to smooth down the edges slightly. Doesn't take much, to be honest. It's quite simple. And bearing in mind that this is going to be engraved on the other side. So if you do slip a little bit into it on the inside, you, you will not notice because you will have... Uh, been engraving on the other side. Well, certainly in this case, I am. Now I've got a rubber, any rubber you happen to have, uh, even any shape really, just to, um, again, smooth it out a little bit. Uh, it's slightly darkening it, but I am not necessarily going for a transparent look I'm just um, smoothing it out and it's slightly transparent uh, on the inside because I'm using this burr but of course it's difficult to get right down into the corners and I could have grabbed my very thin pencil rubber 
but quite frankly, because of um, the engraving on the front that I'm going to do, I'm, I'm, I'm not too fussed. Right here I have got a small diamond ball burr. Once again, you'll notice that I have got the water, um, what would you want to call it, the little reflection. It's not a reflection. It, it, it redirects the water away from the drill at the base um, of the burr by the collet. Collet? Collet. <laughs> Anyway, you know what I mean. I'm just trying not to get the water into the micromotor. So here I'm doing that very, very simple action. Um, back and forth and back and forth. And instantly imitating the sort of basic um, flow of, of the leaf. Maybe um, the flow of the veins. It's entirely up to you what how you do it. This I find... Just a very effective, very easy um, way of doing a leaf, especially for my beginners. It's just, and quite frankly, for me as well, I, I use it a lot. It, um, you know, unless you are doing a botanical study of a particular leaf that's got a particular pattern on it, um, you can do these. And again, these leaves are, are flat leaves. They're all facing the same way. I haven't really twisted them. Um, and just again, because this glass is a demonstration glass, I have kept things very simple for my student. Every time I um, have a new student, out will come this glass or one of the other glasses and I will engrave this same flower from start to finish. And then after that, my student will... Um, engrave one themselves and then we go on to other subjects so this is always the first thing I do now I've got a uh, grey rubber or you can use any rubber whatever rubber you've got just to add some shading um, wherever you want on the leaf I'm sort of bringing it down to what will be uh, just underneath the, the flower because when you engrave the flower that will then appear to be on top of the leaf. Now I didn't mention when I was engraving the effects on the rim of the glass, near the rim of the glass, I am not going deep. In fact I'm not going very deep at all with, with the leaves anyway. Um, now here is a uh, rat's tail which I am just sharpening the top, getting it down to the fresh diamond around the edge and I'm using a very old Greenstone. Now, an interesting fact uh, you may be wondering. This was a question asked by Nancy, one of my patrons. She asked whether the stones have a coating or whether they are stone all the way through. There, I am showing you that they basically, um, well, they do go all the way through di down to a sort of a base of some sort, um, that dark coloured stuff. Uh, this burr, uh, again, you can see it poking out the top. It's very old and would have started its life something like, come on, where are you? There. Um, there. Quite a long time ago, it would have been quite a substantial stone. You can see the dark stuff underneath. So... There's a lot of wear in these stones. And as you can see, once it's really lost its shape and, it, and, and the colour's poking out, I use it to, to um, sharpen the rat's tails. So here's my nice sharp rat's tail. And I'm just going to add some little details to the leaves. Very simple. And, and I'm, I'm just kind of matching up what I have done on the rest of the glass. Very simple. Just a line down the middle and some little veins. Making sure that my little veins um, are in the same direction as the, the texture, the slight texture that I have done on the leaves with the diamond. Ball 
and it's just an effect. So this is nice and sharp and it's going relatively deep but I'm not pressing that deep. Um, it's, quite, it's quite effective. Turning the glass so that it's, it's more comfortable to get a good stroke. I've just got a tiny little brush here because some of the diamond has sort of gone quite deep. You can see it shining there and you sort of get slight panic. Oh, have I cracked the glass? No, I haven't cracked the glass. It's fine. It's just, <laughs> there was a lot of diamond uh, accumulated. The dust uh, had accumulated in the, in the dip and I just cleaned it out. Right, here's a nice big uh, diamond coated burr and I'm starting on the petals and I'm just going to... Um, do a basic little outline slightly deeper on the inside but when I get to the rim not deep at all obviously just touching the surface so that we're getting the, the, the bright um, white that's all I'm trying to do don't need to be any kind of depth and as I say only going slightly deeper as I go over the leaf area so that it looks like it is coming on top I have got a fair amount of thickness to play with so I'm I'm all right uh, if your glass is slightly thinner then you know really play it by ear and um, you can still get the effect of the depth simply by shading it um, which we'll be doing as well anyway but here again near the rim I am literally just just touching quite a nice sharp diamond so you know it's it's really really easy to engrave it's a little tricky again because I'm in a position where I'm trying to not be in the way of the camera so um, it's a little bit awkward you want a nice flow uh, down to the middle of the petal sort of flicking it up there'll be some of you who have seen this sort of video several times over with this flower so I um, apologize if you're a little bit bored. <laughs> the main, the main uh, thing with this particular video obviously is the carving on the, on the top and, uh, and how deep to go. And it's, I, I think you can have so much fun with it. I really do. Um, again, going a little bit deeper now that I've come down here. And by the way, I have checked this glass for... Uh, stress lines obviously this is not something you would do on a glass that has got a definite stress line um, if you put into search on my patreon channel put it into search and look for stress lines there is a video that I demonstrate um, how you detect them with Polaroid film Starting off with that sort of deep line. Now this is awkward because I'm pushing sideways. That's not a very good way to engrave. But starting off deep and then sort of blending it in. You're blending it in. You don't want to have a fat outline. You just want to be able to blend it. But you do want, um, well, it is nice to be able to have a bit of depth there on the outer edges. It really does make it look like it's, it's on top of the glass. Turning always and, you know, d does help you get the direction right. Pulling it towards you. And whoopsie, <laughs> I was very awkward anyway, so I've gone over the lines, unintentional, I promise, I didn't add that in <laughs> for real, I really, really did slip. So now I'm having a look, and you have a look, and so plan B comes into action, and uh, I could have made the petal bigger, I didn't want to, I've just, I'm just adding in 
a background leaf and this now dictates what the rest of the glass is going to have. Obviously lots of background leaves. One day it will be covered in flowers and that'll be quite nice. So I've got a little white Arkansas and very lightly uh, doing the same action. Um, the, the sort of shape of the leaf as though it's coming out from underneath the bottom uh, flower in this case and then just shading it so making it disappear into the background very simple and we have eliminated the little slip see there's always a story always a story and a reason for um, what Bob Ross used to say is a happy accident. Bless him. Right here I have uh, green stone. And this is, you can use any stone really. It's probably a little bit harsher than I intended. It's, um, I could have run it across a white uh, stone just to give it a little bit more smoothness for a, a, a while. But it's... It's fine. I'm literally just touching the surface and I'm getting rid of all the clear glass. And it's certainly not deep, but it just gives me uh, a smoother surface to work with. Here I've got the white Arkansas and you can use that anyway uh, if you want to, to for that whole area. We don't want to see any uh, plain glass at this point. So I am flicking it out. Um, very, very basically. I'm not spending too much time now. I'm going to demonstrate to you an interesting fact. With the White Arkansas, they behave differently whether you're going up or whether you're coming down. And um, one way is not that bright and the other, well, it's not that dark and the other really um, produces a dark shaded line. So you can have fun with that. You have to experiment. So here I'm just going a bit back and forth and back and forth. Then I've got the um, a little rubber. This one is a soft grey rubber, and um, but you can use whatever rubber you like. Soft is nice because it is is just doing a softer uh, shade rather than a very very harsh one. Uh, we can do that later with a, a disc rubber. And um, yeah, I'm just giving myself um, a background. Now, out with a nice big diamond and slowly, uh, without pressing too deeply, similar sort of idea as we did the pendant, uh, but obviously you're not going to go all the way through, although you could if you want. Certainly in this, this sort of thing, there's nothing stopping you going all the way through. <laughs> um yeah, that would be different. And uh, so I've just used the, the diamond to make a slight indentation into the glass. And I've got the brown rubber. Now, if you use the brown rubber straight onto the di diamond, it is just going to soften it slightly. Sort of a, a, really, as far as I'm concerned, just a, a drabby shade and and not really what we're looking for for here so I want more contrast like I've done on the other flowers so I am going to show you how I got that using the uh, white Arkansas now smoothing out so you could use this straight onto the diamond in fact just smooth it out without pressing too hard Making sure that you work into the middle, otherwise you end up with a donut. So for for a second or two, just hold it in the middle and then sort of build it out or in. Right, now the little brown rubber again, and you will see the difference is quite dramatic. It's much, much darker. If I wasn't in the way of the camera, I would um, 
turn the glass, get get the 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 rubber in a little bit more of a right angle. Um, but that's enough anyway. It's fine. Here I've got uh, a rubber disc, which I'm just going to run over the top because it will just pick up the the upper surface and just make it a, a tiny bit darker. This is a slightly strange rubber I've just grabbed out of my tray. Uh, it kind of leaves a, a sort of a res rubbery residue, which I clean off just now. Now you can imagine the top of the glass with, say, ribbons. Imagine that. Yeah, ribbons going around. That would be absolutely lovely. This is just that little um, brush. It's, uh, I would imagine any standard Dremel set or something like that, whatever you're using, you'd be able to find it easy. I've just picked up some water and I've just cleaned it off. So now you can see it's relatively dark there now. I've got a very small diamond burr, which I'm just simply adding some little dots. I love the, the contrast of this, you know, the dark and the light. It just makes it look nice and lacy. In fact, I've used a slightly uh, thicker burr to the ones I used on the other flowers. But never mind. So I've got a little um, uh, rat's tail here and I'm adding tiny little, uh, well these are stamens if you like, uh, so little stalks just from the circle going out. Now I've got um, my favourite rubber anyway. It's quite a hard black rubber and I'm just going over the top again just picking up the um any ridges like for example the the outer the sides of the petals a bit of the leaf of course it's not going to go into the engraving because it's really hard and it's got quite a wide surface so it's only going to pick up what's on the top the top sort of level of the glass now, because I had um, added that little half-tone flower in the background, I'm going to add a few more just in this area to uh, complete this area of that glass. I have no doubt, of course, I'll be demonstrating on this glass in the future, hopefully um, to my one-to-one -one um students I nearly said patience because I've got I've got COVID on my mind because <laughs> at the moment of course I can't have um one-to-one -one sessions because of of uh, restrictions so again just running over the with the white arkansas a suggestion of the leaves in the background Make your little strokes, uh, although they're not deep, make them deliberate. You know, don't, don't just scribble. Make them deliberate in their, their shape. And you can keep going over them until they do look quite convincing. With this one, I've just done a line at the middle as well. And I will go slightly over the upper leaf, but we will fix that. 
Um, so you don't have to be too careful at this stage. You can whiz it right over the top of that leaf if you want, just to make sure that it's it's neat and consistent. Just adding a little bit. Now you can see the, the dust heading straight up into the dust extractor. Of course I have a mask. Um, having the mask of course makes a big difference if you don't have a dust extractor. Of course as you know that is pretty important. And the use of water keeps the dust down. As you know, I don't use water with a white on canvas because it, it tends to, well, not most of the time I don't anyway. There's no law, <laughs> but it just makes it last longer and you don't need it. Right, there goes my head in the way. I've got, sorry about that. Uh, I've got a rubber and I'm just um, shading again these little leaves that are in the background. I did get my head in the way. I'm so sorry, but anyway, basically... Um, I did the same as, as what I did before. Now I've got my little uh, diamond and I'm just going over those leaves which um, I might have just upset slightly when I was using the uh, wide eye canvas. And as you can see straight away they're back on top nice and sharp. And the little half-turned leaf was well into the background. Just have to touch up that leaf a little bit. Now you will see I also added some little stamens to this flower because um, I did this flower for some student a while ago. Um, and there you go. So much potential, so much fun, I think. And uh, ribbons, flowers, um, animals, birds, insects, whatever you, whatever you fancy going around the room. Have fun with it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.